like to thank the organizer for uh, having me here. I am a Chelsea fan, so if I am very excited, it's not due to the presentation, it is due to a Chelsea goal. Okay, so if I see I'm very motivated, just tell me that Valencia scored against Chelsea and I will be devastated. I think you all look as the IT friend who in every Christmas dinner needs to explain to children how Instagram works in order not to um, in order to avoid problems so you are in that situation I am here to help you survive Christmas dinner I don't know if you know that training in cyber security is a bit like vaccinations. I'm not talking about preventing diseases. I am talking about positive externalities. When we train someone in cyber security and the training works, that successful training will have a very positive impact in the environment of that person. And this is more relevant when talking about children. When I say children, I am mainly thinking of children between 9 and 12 years old. In those cases, when a serious problem occurs, the main reaction or the main resource of children are peers. And this is more evident during um, teenage uh, years. So if we are able to communicate our cyber security strategy, then you have seen all those children in the workshops this morning. So if we manage to make those children and teenagers to convey the key uh, strategies, half of our job will already be done. I wanted to comment on these aspects. I want to place you into context of the questions that children frequently ask. I will also talk about some practical exercises that I do with them, which are not common but quite successful, and some ideas for you to share with your friends and especially with those children who are jumping around the house and whom we want to protect because we do not want anyone to do them any harm, not on social network, not on the internet. The first thing I want to talk about is one of the first stories or one of the my favorite questions. This happened some years ago. I don't know if you know who Selena Gomez is. Please raise your hand if you know who she is. Yeah, quite a few. And do you know what TikTok is? Raise your hand. More of you know about TikTok, which was renamed uh, Musical.ly. For those who don't know it, it is a karaoke application. So, you know, the typical thing we used to do to sing in front of the mirror, now you can do it, but with very cool filters and effects on Instagram, and then you can share it. TikTok is the uh, social network that has had a bigger increase in the last few years, and there are already football teams, for example, who are carrying out marketing campaigns in these social networks. So we, for example, Selena Gomez is um, is advertising her new album in this kind of social networks. Okay, so I was speaking in a classroom of year six, and after my presentation, a girl came to my side and asked me, okay, I'm going to tell you that last week, I, Selena Gomez sent me a message through Selena Gomez in order to invite me to do a duet together. After what you said, maybe it wasn't Selena Gomez. And I replied, 
Indeed, I don't think it was Selena Gomez. So this is the contrast be between the use of technology and the naive instinct that we have at certain ages. I am setting this example because parents usually think that their children are digital native, and this is a myth. The myth is that um, we think children are completely capable of using technology because they were born in this era. So if I was born in at the time when TikTok was created, then you should know how to use it. Of course not. But we are speaking a lot about the myth of digital natives, and I am sure that you will hear uh, something like nowadays children, and every sentence that starts with nowadays children is not going to be good. And that myth is a perfect excuse not to train our, our children how to use technology. They are digital native and they know much more than us, so how am I going to give them some training? It is true that your children may know more about you, but life experience belongs to adulthood. Just due to the fact of having lived more experiences, we know more about life. If your son gets home and tells you, Messi wrote to me and is inviting me to play football with him in the park, Obviously, you don't care about the technology used, you don't care if it was Snapchat, Facebook or Instagram, you don't care about the social network, your life experience and your education in values, ethics, which is gaining more and more important is multi-platform. We don't care about the platform they use. Some years ago, 90% of my conferences were devoted to 20. Nowadays, it doesn't make any sense to even mention 20 in a talk, because children look at me with a very weird face. Imagine if I tell them about Photolog. This is like ancient times for them. So, re despite your technology experience, your life experience will give you skills to know how to react to these situations. The fact of you being trained or uh, train somebody in technology or the fact of you um, talking to a friend who is worried because their children use a uh, social network, the best the best piece of advice that you can give those parents who are worried about their children is to create an account in that social network, even if uh, they say they don't care. If they create an account, they can try the social network in order to know how it works, and then you can eliminate your account. Because when you get to know applications, you start losing the fear. And the problem comes when we do not know the applications, because when something is unknown to us, usually we are afraid of it. And when we are afraid of it and we cannot understand it, what do we do? We hide it. This is one of the main problems when talking about children between 12, 13 years old who are hiding their problems. On many occasions, willingly, in good faith, for example, as for sexual um, content in the United Kingdom, 
one e and a half years ago, they noticed that it was a big problem because children were claiming that when they were finding sexual content on the internet, they admit that they feel awkward and they do not want to see that kind of content. But we need to live in the real world. In the United Kingdom, they prevented access to any sexual content to uh, people under 18 years old. And they, in the end, they abandoned that project. But I think that Macron, some weeks ago, said that he wanted to uh, try that idea. Of course, I have a small kid and I would be terrified if he could watch a video with extreme violence. And I am aware of the fact that filters for children are not completely efficient. As a positive thing, what they managed to do in the United Kingdom with that attempt was to uh, boost the origination of uh, groups of hackers. When we focus on deleting the risk, eliminating the risk, as if we were able to eliminate all risks in the universe, something that parents always want to do. When we focus on that, these things happen. This is a report by INHIBE. When children are asked, are asked, what do you know to do, do you know what to do when somebody acts online in a way you don't like? The percentage of girls under 12 year olds that understand many times or always is 36%. Only 6% of girls under 12 years old know how to react in face of those risks. The important is not the risk itself, it is the management of that risk, which is the key of the problem. On the right side, you can find one of my favorite uh, graphs regarding to minors and digital skills. The pink bars show less competent uh, minors, which work in a more restricted environment due to their parents' limitations. On the, the blue bars show children who can navigate on their own without restrictions or limitations. However, these graphs distinguish between the risk and the harm. It is not the same. On the left side, you see the number of children who receive sexual content messages or pictures. Logically, those who can navigate on their own receive more uh, of this kind. However, if you see the harm on the right side, you can see that it is lower, even if they are exposed to greater risks. And this is, this is uh, very important because maybe we need to change our focus and train our children with tools in order for them to face those risks. On many occasions, we focus on exceptional um, situations and we forget about daily situations. I am insulted uh, in, on foreign for me on Fortnite, and if you tell them, if you tell them, do not play. Obviously, that's not the uh, solution. Or somebody, or somebody, ask me to join our our accounts on Instagram, and you tell them, do not, do not use Instagram. Of course not. That's not the solution. Or what about a person asking out, uh, asking a children? Out. It is not important where that happened. 
The important thing is how to manage that risk. So I'm going to give you some example of strategies. Something that we, that I think we need to work more on. Um, I don't know if you know Maldito Bulo. They um, try to dismantle myths on the internet. The important thing is to teach children how to detect real and fake information on the Internet. An exercise that I usually do is to show a profile. This is a profile by of Sean Mendes, a very popular singer. And I ask them, what makes you think that this is a real profile? This is a trap question because the obvious answer is nothing. But you can find really interesting answers because they say the, he has many followers, he has the blue, uh, the blue tag, or yeah, yeah, it is the official one for any reason. Notice that one of the tasks by Maldito Bulo is training. It is, is it good to put pressure on social networks on the issue of fake news in order to reduce them? Yes, of course it is, but we also need to uh, have a list to uh, train children in order for them to be able to detect real or fake news. Here, when minors are asked if they find it easy to check if information is real or fake, only 27% of boys, 18% of girls under 12 years old say it is easy. 27% under 17 years for girls. So obviously this is something we need to focus on. Another issue that I have noticed is that we tend to blame victims. Here you have some screenshots of a very popular video on YouTube where they create a metaphor where a 10-year-old girl decides to hang a poster on the door of her house with uh, uh, pictures of her. Then a man passes by and he decides to enter the house and the end is a bit disaster because those her roommate, her classmates start uh, posting the same pictures in the walls of the school, the girl reacts, the man is arrested. However, there are some details in the video that I don't like. First of all, can we first speak about roommate, about her classmates who were posting her pictures on the hanging her pictures in the school? The girl didn't commit any crime. However, the her roommates, her classmates did. We cannot blame the girl because she didn't know that she had an option to make her pictures private. There are also some uh, security breaches which are so big that you have no warranties at all. And finally, what we need to tell children is not to hang a poster in the door of her of their houses because they are going to do it anyway. We want we have to ask them what do you want everyone to see? I mean if you have a digital identity it is like having a poster hang on the wall of on the door of your house. 
Do you, what do you want people to see? Maybe you want them to see that there is a hobby. If you tell them, remove the poster, it is going to be more complicated because when you reach uh, 15 years old, you will want to have that poster. We need to rethink what we want to show the others. To give you more representative data, let's go back to those control issues. When we're speaking of how, what's the percentage of children who are given permission to, who ha who do not have the permission to use uh, on to use internet the percentage is similar to the one that replied that their parents uh, help them when something bothers them on the internet and only 23% of children say their parents talk to them um, on topics related to the internet. My message, the message I want to convey is that it is very natural, normal for children that when we are speaking with children we tend to close the door in order to leave all the risks outside and we may discard the, the fact that they are going to end up uh, in that digital world. So even if you don't know a lot about technology, you need to talk with your children about it. Because this is something common for many platforms. Sometimes it is just uh, going, uh, go, doing that trip, that journey together with your children. Something which is quite frequent in teenagers is to uh, have a link on your profile where your classmates can ask you questions in an anonymous way. Go back in time. Let's imagine yourself 15 years ago. If you had a profile where you can have anonymous questions um, and comments, maybe from the girl you like, you would have loved it. It is something quite frequent. Not long ago, I was asked about a girl who had a profile in this social network and an anonymous user was insulting her, was bothering her. So how can, can I denounce this? I don't use this application, I don't know its reporting tools. The situation was not that serious so as to go to the police station. It was a situation she was more or less managing. So what can we do? We search in Google, right? It is as easy as that. So you can write, denounce Courier's cut. It is true that sometimes since it is, uh, since these social networks have an English origin, maybe you need to look for uh, English words such as report, Korea's cut, and then the first result is a link by the official website with um, instructions of how to denounce users, even those who do not have a profile in the social network. Just talking and going through this process with your children all together is going to be quite positive because the most important thing is for them to be uh, competent and know how to look information or solutions on Google, for example. In order to end up uh, I think there will no be time for questions, but you have my Twitter account, so you can uh, look for me on the internet to ask me any questions. But I wanted to tell you first about a practical case that I carried out with my son, because you may be wondering, how can you apply this to my four-year-old girl or boy? My son 
is four year old and likes to play with a tablet, although he prefers my laptop. He is quite smart, as you can see. I spend some time with him playing on the computer. I also let him play by himself. And there are some instructions that any child, any child can understand. For example, you cannot take a device without asking permission. You have some time limitation. And the most important thing is that if you see something weird on the screen, it's not your fault. So tell me about it, and I will help you to solve it. That's the key, because the youngest children feel very guilty when something wrong happens to a digital device and that's uh, that's been taken as an advantage uh, by those who try to do them some harm because children think they are going to be punished however not everything that is on the screen is uh, the result of your activities, because uh, sometimes you just see some Google adverts, for example. From that day on, he tells me everything that happens on the screen. Last week, he told me something weird is happening, and the only thing that had happened is that he had minimized the folder that he was using to play. That was the perfect a moment to explain to him how to open more folders, how to minimize them, and so on. Maybe he couldn't understand everything that I told him, but I'm sure he kept some of that information. Last week, we ordered a pizza on the Internet. And at a certain point, I told him, I'm taking my smartphone to check my uh, inbox. And he was, why are you receiving some message when you pay um, online? And I was trying to explain to him that since uh, we are using digital money, I need to receive a confirmation text to know that uh, uh, that everything is secured. We are obsessed with how long children can spend in front of a screen in a week. But the most important thing is how long do children and parents spend together using that screen because it is good to reduce the time children spend alone in front of a screen but if we can manage to increase the time that families all together spend in front of a screen let's imagine a 14 year old girl showing you your Instagram then we will have proven that children are digital natives and know how to manage risk, which are always going to be there. Thank you very much.